All right. We are about to go live, my friends. Happy Saturday to you. It's Mike here, and we're live. So in today's session, what we're going to do is deviate from what we normally talk about and talk about practical solutions should you or a family member or someone you care about catch a cold. Now, it seems that many people, at least in the U.S. and, and presumably abroad, have a cold. You might be able to tell. I was exposed to a cold over the weekend, had, felt a little tired on Sunday, and I bounced back. Now, I was able to bounce back, have a productive week because I have been in this, I've been blessed to be in this nutrition space for the past 15 plus years. So I wanted to just to share with you, uh, not theory, but also science. Some of the most recently available science when it comes to iodine, when it comes to red light therapy to actually recover your muted or lost sense of smell or taste, anosmia as it's called. Uh, we're going to talk about photobiomodulation and we're also going to talk about zinc in the olfactory bulb. And so when you think about you know, being, beating a cold or you have an illness, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, kind of react and, and think about, okay, vitamin D, or uh, we think about vitamin A, all those things are helpful. It's going to be tacitly implied uh, throughout this conversation that you're eating real food, that you're taking your vitamin D, your vitamin A, and some of the basics, okay, getting good sleep. But what I would like to share with you in today's session is what I feel to be underutilized tools that we should all have sort of at, at home, and not just during the cold and flu season, Season, but all the time. Uh, again, we're going to talk about photobiomodulation to improve and help recover your loss of uh, sense of smell and taste. We're going to talk about zinc and iodine. So uh, let's continue on and dive into this, okay? So here's a, a very interesting study that was recently published. The title of this study is Infectious Diseases Management and Control with Providine Iodine. Now, Providine Iodine is used in many different medical applications. Uh, this is here pre-exposure prophylaxis to prevent healthcare workers from getting sick. In Belgium, in Portugal, uh, in Malta, and even the World Health Organization recommends gargling with iodine for individuals who know that they're going to be exposed to a pathogen or have or know that they have been recently exposed to a pathogen. So iodine is very effective. If you think about, you know, uh, swimming pools, hot tubs, uh, commercial settings in that regard with, with um, you know, uh, pools and hot tubs, they use uh, chlorine, they use bromine, uh, even in the water supply, it's chlorinated, uh, fluoridated. So iodine is a solution that I think is highly underutilized uh, especially for individuals uh, who might be like sleep deprived, who might be stressed, who might be in a crowded situation. Iodine is very effective. So um, of course, we're not talking about curing, treating, preventing, or diagnosing any disease. But um, this is the iodine that many of the studies reference. The problem with the providine iodine is it stains your skin. Uh, but iodine is uh, the bioactive, you know, new, uh, you know, compound in, in this particular providine iodine. Uh, what I personally do, and you all know my conflicts of interest, uh, we've been selling liquid iodine for a very long time. I recommend this iodine. Uh, of course, you can find liquid iodine anywhere, but this is not going to stain your skin. Now, the way that I recommend delivering it to your body uh, just for supporting health, we're not, again, talking about treating, curing, preventing, or diagnosing any diseases. Okay, we're talking about just cleaning out your nose, right? It's just very simple. So if you have a, con you have a little congestion, you think you're around someone that just had a cold, okay, here's what you do. And all the links for everything that we're going to be talking about will be linked below. This is the Nelly Med sign -Gator. I use this all the time. I mean, I mean out of Many of the conversations that people pay me good money for to consult them about their health, their nutrition, overcoming some health challenges that they have, this comes up more often than not. Okay, so the Nelly Med Sinigator, you can go get this at CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, any drugstore. You can buy it off Amazon. There's going to be a link below. I put two to three drops uh, of uh, the Myosinus liquid iodine in there with a little bit of salt and water. Now, you can do this if you just have a little congestion like I do, right? Um, you know, your sinuses are a little congested. It could be seasonal allergies. It could be a cold. It could be a poor night's sleep. It could be mold or dust in the bedroom. Okay, so before you go to bed, you want to clean, clean out your nose. Now, that offers a lot of benefits during, you know, when it's cold and flu season, obviously, but it helps you sleep better and make sure you're breathing through your nose while you're sleeping. So make it a goal, make it a priority to invest $29 in this Nelly Med Sinigator. You can buy it off Amazon or go to your local drugstore and the liquid iodine. Uh, from myoscience, it's not going to stain your skin like other iodine solutions. So uh, iodine, really effective, and also you can gargle with it. You can take a little iodine in your mouth, put a little Redmond Real Salt, gargle. Okay, these things can be very effective. 
Now, I know I sound like I have a cold. Um, like I said, I was exposed to people who were sick. This is the most of my symptoms. A little tired on Sunday. That's about it. Haven't been, haven't had a cold for over a year. Okay, so let's continue on and talk a little bit more about zinc and the olfactory bulb. So a common challenge many people experience when they get a cold is their sense of smell and taste becomes muted. And it turns out that there's a strong correlation uh, with zinc and other micronutrients in terms of helping to turn back online the olfactory bulb. Now, before I get into zinc, I think it's actually worthwhile to look at this particular paper because I think there's some more implications here when it comes to your muted sense of smell and taste, and particularly considering your APOE4 genotype. So about a week and a half ago, we launched a video that took a deep dive into everything you need to know about APOE4. I mean, I'm not the expert, but we reviewed a lot of papers that in my opinion will help you better understand what APOE4 is, what it does, and how having one or two APOE4 alleles, this is a gene, you only test it once, knowing your genotype, and then also knowing if you do get a muted sense of smell or taste after you get a cold, what that might imply in terms of your future risk for developing things like mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease, or dementia. Okay, so there was this paper here. The title here is, Could COVID uh, Anosmia, sorry, I have to zoom in here. Uh, Could COVID Anosmia and Olfactory Dysfunction Trigger an Increased Risk of Future Dementia in Patients with APOE4? That's the title of the paper. It was published January of 2021. It was published in the journal Medical Hypothesis. Okay, so here's an image that as we continue on to talk a little bit more about this, and then we're gonna dive into zinc and photobiomodulation as modalities or tools in your home toolkit that can help you should you have anosmia or prolonged loss or muted sense of smell and taste. So keep this image in the front of your mind. But first, I just want to welcome all of you back. It's Mike Mutzel. Thank you, as always, for being here. We are live on Saturday. I'm grateful that you're here. If you're enjoying this content, you can do us a huge favor and other people who are interested in learning health information like you. Please hit that like button and please share this video if you found it to be valuable and leave a comment below. I'd love to know where you're viewing from and if you're finding these live sessions particularly helpful. Okay, so we're trying to keep this very practical, nuts and bolts, because I don't know about you, but pretty much every single person I know has a cold right now. It's insane. I don't remember a particular time in history where all of my friends and all of my family have a cold. It's insane. So we're trying to keep this very practical and share different solutions. So if you're enjoying this, please share this video. Uh, it goes a long way. Okay, also everything that we talk about are gonna be in the links below. Okay, so before we go back to zinc and talk further about zinc in the olfactory bulb and how that nutrient can be utilized to help turn back on, potentially restore anosmia or the, the lost or muted sense of smell, let's talk a little bit about what this may mean if you do have a prolonged loss of sense of smell and your future risk for potentially developing neurodegenerative diseases, okay? So as this paper talks a lot about, the inflammatory milieu that's associated with various infections, including COVID-19, it seems to augment this homeostatic balance in the olfactory bulb, okay? Now, that is correlated, not causative, of future cognitive issues, okay? Now, uh, what I'm going to share here is even more resources. Should you more be more interested or should you know someone that has a prolonged loss of smell, like months, okay? That is a red flag for potentially future cognitive decline. And that individual should very much consider improving their nutrition, lifestyle and exercise and sleep modalities, getting rid of sugar and processed foods because this is an early warning sign for future cognitive decline. And it may be more you know, sort of correlated with your APOE4 genotype. I happen to be an APOE3-4. My loss of sense of smell was so bad after I got a particularly bad cold in 2020 in December. I remember in January, I was pouring gasoline into a generator. Okay, the power went out, I think it was like the 17th of January or something like that. So it was about a month after I got a really bad cold, you know, the cold. And I could not smell the gasoline. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is not good. How like I've been around gasoline my entire life. I used to race motorcycles. You know, the sense of uh, fuel is is very strong, and I could not smell it. So I started to think about this interview that I did with Lou Lim, 
And that's why I'm linking it right here. Okay, uh, it's also linked in the description and in the show notes. And one of the papers, Lou Lim is a PhD, by the way, he has a great product called the V-Light um, that I use. It's a, a uh, you know, sort of red light therapy to improve uh, cognitive function. Okay, for people that have had blunt force trauma to the head, uh, people like me who have played football or done a lot of action sports and had concussions and head trauma. Okay, so really important that um, loss of sense of smell is an early warning sign of neurocognitive disease, okay? So I want you to understand this. Now, um, just keep in mind, this this isn't like, this doesn't mean that if someone has a loss of sense of smell, they're going to get dementia or Alzheimer's. It's just a little bit of a, a, a wake-up call, shall we say, so that they ought to double down on the, the known nutrition, diet, and lifestyle and exercise modalities that can help to preserve uh, cognitive integrity and so on, okay? So with that in mind, let's get back to zinc, okay? And then we're going to talk about photobiomodulation, which is uh, a fancy way of talking about how red light can be utilized um, to improve uh, various mitochondrial activities in the body. But first, when it comes to prolonged loss of sense of smell or taste, let's consider zinc. This is a paper here. Uh, the title of this paper is Olfactory Disturbances as Presenting Manifestations Among Egyptian Patients with COVID-19, A Possible Role of Zinc. Now, you might be saying, gosh, zinc? Is this even approved by the Food and Drug Administration for this particular condition? It turns out um, that zinc is actually not FDA approved, okay? So just want all the legal attorneys and the, the uh, you know, uh, folks, fact checkers over at YouTube and iTunes to know that, right? Uh, it's not FDA approved. However, there has been several clinical studies that have randomized people to, that have anosmia or the lot, prolonged scent loss of smell, and they were given zinc. And guess what? It turns out that after several weeks of treatment, the zinc users had a lower, uh, had, had a better recovery rate of their loss of sense of smell. Again, just want to be very clear. We're not talking about curing, treating, or preventing COVID-19. You need to work with your doctor. However, it seems that this nutrient, zinc, can actually help to sort of turn back on the olfactory bulb, okay? So there's some pretty good uh, evidence and research there. Now, of course, dietary supplements are not approved for anything. Um, essentially, the FDA hasn't approved them. So if you want really expensive urine, you too can take zinc. One of the zinc solutions that I recommend is the zinc bisglycinate chelate. It's very well absorbed. So that means that your urine will be very concentrated in zinc, okay? So you can use a coupon code podcast below to, to try zinc. I know there's a lot of different solutions. What the myoscience zinc offers that's a little bit different than the other solutions is the form. It's bisglycinate chelate, okay? So it's a um, uh, from Albion. It's very well absorbed. So again, if you want very expensive urine because supplements are not approved to do anything, check out the Myoscience Zinc. Now, speaking of expensive urine, there's other things that you can do like a zinc taste test. And so this is a liquid zinc. It's $9, very affordable. And so this is kind of a, a fun little thing that you can do with kids at home or if you want to give your kids zinc, they can uh, take the, the zinc taste test. And so individuals who don't taste a metallic taste. It's a surrogate indicator that potentially they have a zinc deficiency. So let's talk about, before we get into photobiomodulation, let's talk about what sort of clinical situations or diets or lifestyle habits might exacerbate or worsen a zinc deficiency. Okay, people that exercise, we know that when you sweat, when you do hot yoga, when you go running, hiking, where you're sweating in the sauna, what is released in your sweat is not just minerals like magnesium and sodium and chloride and calcium, things like that, also zinc, okay? So if you are an active sauna user, if you do hot yoga, if you exercise intensely, you might also want to consider supplementing with zinc. Now, when would you want to supplement with zinc so that your urine is very expensive, remember, because it's not approved? Uh, well, I recommend supplementing with zinc before you go to bed, okay? So there's actually some research that was done at, at I, my alma mater, Western Washington University, combining aspartic acid, magnesium, and zinc, ZMA. Now, this goes back um, many, many years, and they found that in men at least, this was in football players, that it was able to increase various anabolic-related hormones and growth hormone and testosterone, okay? So for whatever that's worth, if you want really expensive urine when you urinate in the morning, take your zinc before you go to bed, okay? Now, let's finish off and talk a lot more about this photobiomodulation, okay? 
photobiomodulation. Okay, this is another non-FDA approved modality, right? So just keep that uh, in mind. Now, this was um, published in the journal Photodiagnosis and Phot Photodynamic Therapy. Uh, the title of the paper here is a Brazilian multi-center pilot case series on the efficacy of photobiomodulation therapy for COVID-19 and its related taste dysfunction. So they had this particular group had several different studies where they looked at taste and smell, okay, using photobiomodulation. Now, you're probably thinking, what on earth is this photobiomodulation stuff? Okay, so many of you have heard of the juve light. Okay, this happens to be, this is the hive light from Blue Blocks. Again, links are below. I have a coupon code. We make a small little affiliate commission on this, but you can just go right to their website if you don't want to support our channel. That's fine. It's up to you. Just trying to let you know what's going on. Um, I'm actually sending this to my friend after this video, okay, because his family uh, got a cold, okay, just a cold, and guess what? They're, they, they have experienced pretty significant loss of sense of smell and taste, and they don't have one of these at-home devices. So I'm, I'm sending this so he can borrow it for a few months. And how you might use this, if you're listening in Spotify and iTunes, you may not be able to see this, but I'm putting this pretty close to my nostril, okay? So this is one of the things that I personally did when I had a cold in December of 2020, is I use this every morning, and we, we actually have a bigger juve light that hangs on our wall, and I would tilt my head back and then just get make sure that you're getting the light right up into that olfactory bulb, okay? Now, there's benefits to doing this irrespective of whether or not you've had a cold, whether or not you've lost your sense of smell. I think, you know, preserving the mitochondrial function within the olfactory bulb and getting red light into your brain and sort of in that region, I think there's therapeutic benefits there. But let me just share with you this particular image so you have a good idea of what these scientists actually did. And to me, I think this is quite fascinating because... Again, you can turn on the television, but we're not really hearing uh, much about this. So I'm going to drop this right into the screen. I apologize that this one didn't make it for the presentation uh, prior to me starting it. But as you can soon see, uh, this is essentially what the researchers did to these individuals in Brazil from that reference that I just shared with you. So you can see the nose is quite lit up and this red light is impacting the olfactory bulb that tends to sort of atrophy or there's some sort of homeostatic or cellular dysfunction when individuals catch a respiratory virus. It's not you know, specific to necessarily any virus, but when individuals get sick, it seems that there is some sort of mute, muted sense of smell and perhaps you know, that, that light therapy could be an adjunctive therapy. Again, I want to be very clear, sorry to say this so many times, but we cannot cure, treat, prevent, or diagnose disease and or treat COVID-19, okay? We're talking about a, a cold and if you lose your sense of smell. So this is a, a good tool. And so in summary, I, I want to get to your live questions and I want to honor those of you that are here. Thank you for the comments and hitting that like button. I want to get to your questions, but just summarize. So everything that we talked about today can be utilized you know, in your household for various different situations. Let's say you are uh, pulling down your Christmas lights and you slip on the ladder and you step on a light bulb and you're in your bare feet and you, 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 know, you, you get a puncture wound and you want to heal quickly. You can use the iodine that we mentioned for that particular scenario to help reduce the probability that your foot will get infected and you can help your foot recover quicker by using light therapy photobiomodulation. So the things that we're talking about are not just relegated to the cold and flu season. In fact, if you go out camping or in the back country or your power goes out, or like in Texas last February, you know, the power went out, people didn't have water. And this is why having iodine in your household is so valuable because remember, iodine is antimicrobial. It has virucidal capacities, it has antibacterial well, capacities. So you can use this in your home or you know, if you're on a road trip, to help to sterilize water as well. So this is not just something that's just very specific for cold and flu season. The things that we talked about are important for other applications as well. You know, for example, when spring comes around and let's say you invest, I highly recommend you get this Nelly Med irrigator that I, I mentioned. Links are below twenty nine dollars. Any drugstore in the world, basically, okay, you can use this when you know the allergies are kicking up. Hay fever is coming around. You can clear your nostril. Let's say tonight, because it's Saturday, 
you go out and you have a little bit of beer or wine with your friends and your nose is all stuffed up, or let's say you have gluten or wheat or whatever, guess what? You can clean your nose with a little iodine, a little sea salt, so that you can breathe better through your nose when you're sleeping. So I just want to be very clear. These are things that it, this like $50 in this, and then the light is several hundred dollars. You're going to use these for a lot of different applications. So this is where it's nice to sort of invest in these things so that should un certain or unpredictable events happen in your life, you have solutions um, so that you can, you know, support your family, okay? So um, what, I, what I didn't show you up to now is this particular slide here with the improvements uh, in taste and smell with the individuals who underwent consistent photobiomodulation. And so what you're seeing here is after several weeks, there was a significant improvement uh, in individuals' ability to regain their sense of smell and taste, which is quite interesting. And this is just doing something simple, non-invasive, using a red light near the nose, up the nose. Now, who would have ever thought? Now, this is why I'm critical of the mainstream media because like people, why aren't we hearing about these things? I mean, we're not hearing about these solutions. Uh, and a lot of people are sick right now. So in summary, my friends, Thank you for watching all the way through. Thank you for being here. I'm going to get to your live questions momentarily, but I just appreciate you being here. Thank you for that like button. Everything that we talked about will be in the links below, okay? Uh, feel free to use those links, those coupon codes. If you have any questions, I'm going to be following the comments and uh, let's get to some live questions. Okay, Swamp Hawk is in the house. Swamp Hawk, you are always here, which is amazing. Um, Alexander says, best content. Thank you for that. I mean, it's... I think it's, I just want to be practical. Okay. Junior Shepherd said, a friend told me zinc levels are connected to autism. You know what? There is, you know, cysteine levels are, are linked. Elevated cysteine in the blood is linked with say heart disease. Uh, copper imbalances are linked with autism. Yeah. So um, I, I think zinc is an important nutrient that unfortunately is not commonly available in a lot of processed foods that most people are eating. So I think a lot of people are deficient in that. Sprout says, I've been using my photobiomodulator twice a day. I've been exposed twice this week. No problems so far. Amazing. Thank you for that. Okay, Swamp Hawk says, I wish I could afford photobiomodulation, but those red lights are really expensive. Well, that's why I suggest starting with a small travel friendly. So the Juve Go 2.0 that is about this same size. My friends, these are about $200. Now, here's the benefits to these in addition to obviously you know, regaining uh, control of your sense of smell and muted uh, taste is wrinkles, uh, even testosterone enhancement. Um, you got to put this close to your genitals, men uh, and ladies who want to help your men get a little testosterone boost. And I have found this to be very helpful uh, subjectively, of course, but I did look at my biomarkers, my total testosterone, free testosterone and DHEA levels. And I was quite impressed with how photobiomodulation was able to improve that. Okay. So there are some, um, Good results there. So SMP Rowan says, is iodine okay to use if you have Hashimoto's? Yes, but you also want to consider if you're taking super physiologic oral you know, levels of iodine, if you're ingesting it, which I do recommend, and that's why the liquid iodine is so easy. You put a dropper full in the tongue, you're getting about two milligrams. When you go over about five milligrams, you want to also ensure that you're supplementing with selenium or you're eating one or two Brazil nuts a day. Because through a complex mechanism, when you take oral and you ingest uh, higher amounts of iodine, uh, it does increase free radical pathology, uh, not pathology, but through a, through a natural mechanism, thyroperoxidase within the, thyro with, within the thyroid gland, and was, I'm losing my, uh, let me back up, okay. In the process of making T4 and T3, tyrosine is iodinated, meaning that the, there's a series of reactions within the thyroid that involve free radicals and hydrogen peroxide and so forth. And if you don't have selenium on board, the enzyme to neutralize some of those uh, free radicals is, is it needs selenium. So you need selenium if you're taking excessive amounts of iodine. That's a simple way to put it. There's more and more about this. You can Google, actually on our website, High Intensity Health, we talked a lot about this. It's an old post going that I wrote in 2007 about the importance of supplementing selenium if you take high levels of iodine. So long, that was a super long-winded. I'm, I'm, I apologize for that. Um, so yeah, pe people with thyroid issues can take iodine, but consider selenium Cohen concomitantly. Okay. All right, Mike, come on, get it together, man. Okay. Uh, Jay Aldwin says, um, 
Okay, so yeah, individuals that are hypo, hyperthyroid, uh, it, they can cause issues. But what we're talking about, my friends, part of thyroid dis disorders can manifest as a result of iodine deficiency. So um, this is where I think, you know, and, and obviously what T4 and T3 sort of connotes is the amount of iodine molecules on tyrosine, which is your thyroid hormone. So iodine is important for the thyroid, right? It's also concentrated in the breast, in the prostate, in the ovaries, in the uterus. Iodine is very important, my friends. It's very important for developing babies. I have a new, new puppy. We, you saw our video. Her name's Roxy. Um, really important. So we're putting iodine in her food. We're putting iodine in my dog's food. Uh, interestingly, I don't know if y'all have noticed this, but I had that little cold kind of thing. It was like, I'm not sure what's going on on Sunday. And my dog started to get goobery eyes and sniff, nasally. So I wonder if they're catching the, the thing that's going around too. Um, yeah, really interesting. So Brittany Rose says, we got our smell and taste back, but months but months later, uh, meat, eggs, uh, onions, garlic, and so forth smelled very strange. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because my wife was saying the same thing this morning. She was saying, you know, strawberries taste weird or smell weird to her. And I thought that was really bizarre. I'm like, strawberries? I've heard horrific stories about coffee lovers who can't even have coffee anymore because because it tastes just atrocious, right? So look, it could be worse. And I don't know what this means. I mean, I think, you know, neurologists will be studying this for a long time. Um, so friends, thank you very much for being here. I'm going to go back and review all these. I appreciate that you left kind comments. So that is always good. And uh, again, if you want to consider having the most expensive urine in your neighborhood, check out myoscience.com or you can uh, get the zinc absorb, use a coupon code podcast at checkout. Um, you can have really, really expensive urine because dietary supplements do that. Okay. So, so friends, uh, have an awesome weekend. Thank you for being here. We have archery. Uh, my daughter and I, we're going to archery right now and, uh, yeah, have a great day. Get out there, be active, move, try to get those 10,000 steps and we will catch you on a future episode down the road until then be well. Bye now.